I don't have a, a live demo and I don't have a nice presentation. What I do have though is a, an archived notebook that I prepared for, for this uh, particular thing. So, so uh, wh why is it titled Bike Share? Because, uh, well, let's step back. I want to give you a motivational example about stats model. Uh, stat, stats models, it's a module in Python available. It used to be a part of Scikit. Now it's a, 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 of SciPy. Now it's a merged with stats, which was a library that I was using for a while. Now it's a separate module and has several goodies. Uh, and now to the bikes. So um, there is that website out there called Kaggle, uh, which I don't know what they really do, but they, in addition to whatever business they do, they also run competitions. Uh, and the principle of com all these competitions is uh, you get some data and you need to write a predictor that, you know, given a training set will, you know, predict values for the, uh, for the contest set. And that's how you get scored. So I thought I would run one of these as an example of what stats models can do for you. Uh, people who know R very well will chuckle, but that's fine. That's, that's okay. Chuckles are welcome. Uh, so uh, there you go. So we have a set and that's how this data set looks like. That is just a little bit as in, a, in a way of an introduction. So it has, you know, uh, days and then some indicator of our season, year, and, and what weather was on a given day. And at the end, which you cannot see, and neither can I because the screen is small. Oh, oh there you go. That's how I make it scroll. There is there's numbers of bikes rented on a given day. So data comes from a bike rental system, not unlike our Bixi, except that this one is, I think, called Capital Bike and is in, uh, from Washington, D.C. They run, in fact, the Bixi system, and you can get their data which would be, I don't know if you can get Bixi data. Can you? No. Yes. All right, so there you go. Uh, so that, you know, we could do the same for Montreal. So we're trying to predict how many bikes will be uh, rented any given day, right? So uh, first, you know, how this data looks like. And uh, it looks very much like, you know, if you do any sort of, like anything, any web business, and you have logs that shows, you know, usage numbers or so forth, it actually looks kind of like that day by day. So it's this very, you know, like if you do this sort of thing, uh, you know, in web business, it should be like very recognizable. There's like, this is over two years and you see like weekly periods and you weekly variation, then you, then you see, you know, uh, variation with seasons and then whatever, what everybody hopes for, steady growth over time. That's great, more and more bikes. And now, given uh, how disjoint I tend to be, I'll step back and, and give my personal motivational example why I ha actually had to dig out stats models and what, why stats was not sufficient. So, uh, imagine that you have, imagine you have data like this, right? And that show, that's not a very good example of what I want to show, but it, you, know, it, you have some trend over time and you want to, uh, uh, so my problem was that I was trying to find uh, I'll detect outliers, things that would just go, you know, high wire every now and then from from uh, data we're receiving, and uh, to account for steady growth, which was the case, I would fit some sort of line to it using, uh, you know, linear regression. But then it turned out that, you know, outliers themselves would greatly affect what this line is. Now, this 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 graph doesn't show it very well for bikes, so I I, I faked one, adding. Uh, what one would call Im image processing salt and pepper noise. So I just, just randomly spiked, uh, you know, th th here's our regular data right here, right? And every now and then there's something that goes totally wrong, like absolutely wrong. We know it's totally ridiculous and there's, there's basically a malfunction. So we would like to detect these over, over the trend that, that follows over time. And I, you know, wanted to feed a line to that. And uh, in a normal library, which by the way, there'll be lots of, uh, I guess I'm trying to sell stats models as something you can actually use in normal development purposes, not just, uh, you know, for, for data analysis or data science. That's something that you can put in the software. Um, so uh, in, in the stats, you know, stats, the module that normally everybody would use for this sort of thing is basically a library of functions that do things like generate, you know, you can generate data following given distribution, you can fit the distribution to a data, and so, to a data set and so on. Now what it lacks and what stats models has is advanced modeling. So the, 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 my motivational example is called 
robust regression, <coughs> effectively, right? Which this, this picture is supposed to illustrate that you can actually make a fit using functions available in stats models, which will not be fooled by the presence of the sort of perturbance, all right? So uh, that was my motivational example. This is why stats models comes useful. Basically, more advanced stuff is available there in a nice, useful package that you can actually use in your software. Now, back on our bike. So uh, how do we actually model that? So contest data is actually more problematic than, uh, than, than what I'm going to do because they want you to predict things hour by hour on hourly basis. Uh, but I got data aggregated day by day and I split it into, uh, you know, along the same principle as, uh, as they did in the contest, which is like first 20 days of the month, month is your, uh, your data and the following 10 or 11 or 7 in case of February, if you bike in February, uh, that's your, that's the data, you, you, that, that's your uh, test set. That's how they organized it and they follow that except for, you know, on day by day basis. Furthermore, what we need is some sort of way of evaluating whether our method is good, right? So, uh, how do we do that? I mean, the, the traditional way, and I wrote a simple function that, that does it, it basically computes uh, a sum of squares of, of, of different, which is like, you know, that's, that's what we usually evaluate, that's what these methods do, minimize you know, least squares. That's, what, that's how it's called that, right? Minimizes sum of squares. So uh, this, this is my function evaluating, and I'll check a few methods, um, illustrate methods from not from stats models and from stats models, showing how they differ and how you actually feel stats models in practice. Is that, is that clear? All right then. So how can we, so, so what is the, uh, you know, so what is the uh, natural predictor for any sort of uh, time data? You know, we have, in fact, we talk about, I just spoke about weather, right? I mean, it's kind of natural to expect that um, a bike, bicycle usage will be affected by what's out there, right? And there's this funny fact that a very good predictor for, uh, uh, for what weather is going to be tomorrow is, well, it's going to be same as today. And you're right most of the time, uh, in fact, because it doesn't really change that rapidly. So, okay, so that's the, uh, so I wrote a simple uh, function somewhere there that basically takes the most, the most recent available day and I said, okay, well, we don't have data for this point. Let's take the most recent one that we have data for and that's, our usage, right? So that's that. You know, that's the name for forecasting that um, that uh, uh, everybody would use. We are not in stats models yet, right? And um, well, it shows uh, there, there's some uh, there's some score, right? Sum of uh, sum of squares divided by the number of uh, uh, of test points, and uh, well, it's pretty large. So not great, Bob. Unfortunately. But uh, as it will turn out, here's the, the first score I got right was a trivial method. Uh, let's remember, kind of remember that number. It will turn out that this, this is actually hard to beat. So okay, so let's use uh, regression with the functions available in stats, right? So we take, you know, x vector of temperatures, y the number of rented bicycles, and uh, well, let's try it out, right? So uh, we, you can see that there is some correlation, right? So we, we use these functions that are available um, in, in st this is still stats, right? Um, so, and, and then you see that p-value, well, it's, it's below zero. So it is, uh, there's, it's, it's unlikely to be a coincidence. It's very likely that uh, there is indeed correlation between temperature. Now, how, is, uh, how will we do it regarding that score? Well, that's our score. Believe me, it is less than, uh, it, is, uh, it is more than what we got during, it's worse than what we got during the, uh, using the naive method. Meaning, you know, let's just take the last day we had data for. So, okay, we are using a fanciful method, well, kinda, and we are still doing worse than, uh, than the method that like my 14 years do old daughter came out with. So uh, that's not great still. Well, let's try, finally, Stats models. Now that's a line of code I would like to talk more about. And uh, this is in the spirit, well, let's make uh, stats mo uh, a Python module that behaves like R. 
And that's what it really is. If uh, anybody knows R, you will be familiar with the sort of syntax where you just pass a formula that relates uh, um, you know, you, our dependent variable to some independent variables. And uh, from that formula, there is some code in the background that will, uh, that will compute the regression, that will compute the, uh, the, the model, right? So here's what I took, right? Temperature, humidity, and wind speed are factors, right? And uh, what, will, uh, what, what the method will compute. So, so it, it's, it's really th that simple. I feed it a data frame that has the, these columns. I showed that at the beginning, right? Demonstrate that at the beginning. And then count is supposedly a function of, this, of these three things. All we don't know is you know, uh, uh, the, the uh, coefficients that should be there. And conveniently, the, the printout of summary will show us what these coefficients are. We can see, oh, well, they, they claim all, the, 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 they appear all to be significant in the statistical sense. And uh, well, that's, that's great, right? So uh, let's test it out. The, the, um, uh, the, the great module we are discussing fit, made a fit for us, displayed lots of information about it. And uh, oh, here it is, right? Well, let's try. Oh, well, ta-da. That's the first time we are better than the naive method. Just so, barely so, but we are, right? So that shows us how, how, how it really looks like, right? This is green is the test data. Blue is my prediction. This is absolute error in red, right? OK, pat on the back. We are better. Can we do more? Of course we can do more. Nothing beats overfitting, right? So we get, we get more variables. Uh, I, I would like to have my. <coughs> Am I really that bad? Come on. <laughs> I thought I was more entertaining than that. Just like, <laughs> all right. So uh, uh, something I would point out is that uh, there is uh, it's, it's something that is really obvious to someone that does any sort of statistical analysis. But there are uh, variables there that there are variables there like season weekday, whether something is a week, uh, no, day of the week, and, and then uh, uh, weather, uh, that are not really numerical. These are categorical variables, right? And uh, if you take statistics class, they will tell you what, what to do with them. Uh, you introduce dummy variables and, and, and so on. So there's, there's a little bit of work. Uh, fortunately, uh, you don't have to see it now. And uh, as fortunately, I do. Uh, so, so, I mean, the thing is, what's going on? All right. Should I like, hold it? Like, ah, OK. I'll hold it. That will be the, <laughs> the device. All right. Um, so, no, you're not helping. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk. So, so OK, so, so there is, there is uh, th this, follows, this follows the formula part, right? Uh, follows some, some sort of, uh, some sort of uh, simple formalism, and it's uh, one of its. Uh, Features that you can define which variable is categorical, right? Seasons are, you know, they, they had like one, two, three, four standing for uh, winter, spring, summer, and what's we'll ah autumn, right? And that they're not really like it's not like something that you that scales. They kind of, you know, you, you can expect uh, bike usage kind of look like this. So this is not a linear thing. So you don't really want it like, you know, put in the linear equation. So it will be taken care of magically, the right way. And you will see, for instance, and this is kind of nice, uh, that uh, it appears to be important whether weekday is Saturday or Sunday, right? So th there's a distinction between weekend and everything else. These are other weekday, Monday, Tuesday, and so on. They are not like wh which one of these it exactly is. It's not a statistically significant variable, right? So it kind of tells you something about this data. These things are a little bit difficult to read, but uh, with some practice, you can, you can get there. And the score, now that we fed so much data in it, is actually much better, right? That's, if you remember, it's, it's like less than a half that it was at the beginning. So uh, it, is, it is a very, uh, I like the module very much because it has a, you know, it, it, it plays nice with actual production code, unlike, a lot, unlike R, for instance. It's very good for exploration as well. 
does lots of things by itself, uh, it is very good to understand what you are doing. I mean, but that's not only about statistics, it's also about plumbing and anything else you do. So that goes without saying. Uh, but so where I was, oh yeah, so, so uh, uh, it plays nicely with production code. It's very, uh, it's very good uh, for exploration. It is, you don't have to uh, deal with, with R. That's an advantage, trust me. Uh, and um, what else is there to say? Um, there is there's many, many other uh, methods uh, implemented there that come useful if you are really, really into it, uh, like time series analysis, for instance, which would not be appropriate for that problem, by the way, I think. Uh, but uh, all right, that's that. Uh, questions? <coughs>